Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Um, this is going to be a quick and quiet one. There's no music playing in the background. My daughter's asleep. I wanted to do a quick music update or a vinyl update. It's been a while since I've actually posted music. Um, I've been doing a lot of contest entries and whatnot. So, uh, and I've gotten pretty far behind. If you actually look at that whole bottom row, uh, including the stack there, and I've got another big stat going over here. Um, that's all music that I, I still need to listen to and, and still need to, to, to show you guys. And and, uh, and actually in the, the next day or two I'll have a huge metal update with some really, really good stuff. And then uh, I'll follow up that, uh, follow that up a few days later with a uh, um, kind of a little uh, um, oh, you'll just see it when, it when it posts. It'll be another cool update that I'm putting Together though so um, let's just jump into this I've had some really cool scores lately that I've wanted to share and just like I said I haven't got around to it so let's jump in um, first up uh, I picked this up for under 10 bucks and I was blown away an original US pressing of Quadrophenia from the who um, a lot of people prefer um, Tommy to this I've always actually preferred the music of Quadrophenia um, I just always thought this was a, a better concept and the story is not as rich uh, and as good as the story behind Tommy however the, the music itself I think is better uh, than the music from the Tommy um, uh, set so and this was really cool not only is uh, this in great condition in the vinyl and mint condition I've also it also came with the full booklet which is just killer killer condition um, so I was really stoked to find this, and I think I paid $8.99 for it. So, I mean, I was blown away. Every time I see Quadrophenia and Tommy in good condition, people always want like $25, $30 bucks for it, you know. So I was really stoked to, to find that. I also picked this one up that same day. Um, original U.S. pressing of Life's Rich Pageant from R.E.M. Um, I do like R.E.M. This, however, is not one of my favorite albums. This was kind of... Uh, more filling a hole, so I went ahead and grabbed it. There are some good songs on there, though. Uh, this was really cool. I just kind of grabbed this um, because I lived in Japan for for a little over eight years. Um, I, I really like the Asian uh, Asian uh, style music, and to find this, that was really cool. And I listened to it. It's, it's a really killer soundtrack. Um, from Shogun, so definitely worth checking out if, if you're uh, um, into soundtrack scores. That's a really cool one. Um, next up, Notorious from Duran Duran. Again, just uh, kind of filling a hole. Um, Duran Duran kind of holds a special place in my heart. I think I've touched on that story a couple times with uh, an early girlfriend of mine who was really into him, and I got into him because of her. So, Notorious. Um, next up, Fine Young Cannibals, The Raw and the Cooked. This one's been sitting at my local record store for three bucks for about six months. Um, there's a couple of really cool songs on here. She Drives Me Crazy. Um, good Thing. I'm not the man. He's, uh, pretty much the whole album is good. Um, and I finally got around to grabbing it. Like I said, three bucks. I couldn't pass it up. Uh, this one was just kind of a blind buy, Brinsley Schwartz, uh, and it's some pretty cool 70s rock, a little bit of psych feel to it, um, and I really dug it. If you run across this one, pick it up. This is an original pressing. Um, there was a repress that came out a few years ago, but uh, uh, again, definitely worth checking out if you're into 70s, just 70s rock. Pretty cool album. Uh, this one I paid a little bit more for. But I needed both of these albums, which is the reason I grabbed it. Uh, Pink Floyd, a nice pair. Um, this is one of the early, uh, I think this is the first U.S. pressing, if I remember correctly. Um, and for those that aren't familiar with it, this has uh, Saucer Full of Secrets and, I always forget the name of the other, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Um, the first two um, Floyd albums, and, and I was missing both of these albums from my Floyd collection. Um, 
the vinyl and the inner sleeves are in mint condition. Um, the gate folds in really good shape. So again, I was really stoked to find this, and I think I paid under 20 bucks for this one. So now neither of these are my favorite uh, Pink Floyd albums. I do really enjoy both of them. I do like both albums, but uh, um, they were definitely it was definitely about filling up those those two holes in my Floyd collection. So this one I was really surprised to see for the price and stoked when I found it. Um, this is Rush Presto. This is their 89. Um, I don't remember what year. Yeah, 89 album. Um, a lot of people don't like this album. It's, it's ranked pretty low among the Rush discography. However, if you look through the Rush discography, every one of their albums is killer. So, so being at the bottom of the list on the Rush discography is not a very bad thing. Um, probably the biggest hit off of here is The Pass. Um, Superconductor was really good. And this is a promo copy, which I was really stoked about. Um, I don't remember what I paid for this, but it goes for in the mid-60s. I paid well under um, well under half. I want to say I paid under 20 bucks for it. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was a really good deal. Um, it's in perfect condition other than the, uh, the cutout right there. So again, really stoked to find that and, and a really cool album. That was one of the holes in my Rush collection that I just did never expect to fill because you never run across it on vinyl. So, next up, this one I just kind of grabbed. Um, the Catherine Will soundtrack uh, from David Byrne. Um, David Byrne, of course, the, the singer and guitarist from uh, The Talking Heads. That's the main reason I grabbed it, but there are some killer, killer tracks on here. Uh, again, definitely worth checking out if you're a Talking Heads fan. And this was right in the middle of talk, the, the height of Talking Heads. I want to say this was 83, no, 81 when this came out. So this was was when the Talking Heads were at their best. Now it is David Byrne. It's not the whole band, but still very cool um, uh, from the uh, Broadway production of the Catherine Will. <sighs> Next up, another one I was really stoked to find. I picked this one up as well for five bucks. This is a one of the early U.S. pressings of uh, Foreigner, um, their first album, by far their best in my opinion. This album just rocks from beginning to end. Um, feels like the first time, Cold as Ice, uh, Head Knocker, Damage is Done. I mean, the whole album is just amazing. If you look at it. It's in perfect condition, especially for an album from, what was it, 70, 77. Um, the vinyl, too, spotless. Um, got the original inner sleeve there with lyrics. Uh, pretty cool find there. Um, I'm not a huge Foreigner fan, but I really dig their first two or three albums. So I was really stoked to find that one. Um, we'll save that one. This one uh, is a local band here. Um I shouldn't say a local band. They, they made it pretty big in the 80s, but this was their, uh, they are from here in Marietta, where I currently live. So, uh, Guadalcanal Diary, another killer 80s band. Um, this one is uh, excellent, excellent condition. The vinyl's in mint condition. There's some little damage up here, but this is in uh, great shape all around. So, Watusi Rodeo is probably their biggest hit. Um, and just a killer album. If you run across this, definitely worth checking out. Uh, let's save those two, three, let's save those for last. Uh, next up, this one is a really cool comp. Um, I ran across this, I think this was a Goodwill. So I paid less than a buck for it. It's England Rocks for Volume 1. Volume 2 wasn't that good, so I left it. In hindsight, I should have grabbed it. But uh, this has a time of the season from the zombies. Um... Let's see. Cafe Jacques. Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. Great song. Stone Cold Sober from Crawler. I Don't Believe in Miracles from Colin Blundstone. Uh, Russ Ballard winning. That's probably the weakest um, off of here. Uh, the Tourist uh, was a great... Uh, uh, the Tourist with I Only Want to Be With You. Um... Mirror Star from the Fabulous Poodles, Traffic Jam from Sailor, uh, One Rule for You from After the Fire, and uh, Hold Your Head Up from Argent. Uh, killer, 
uh, killer album from beginning to end. I've, I've cranked this two or three times, just some really good early 70s rock. And this was uh, 81 when this comp came out. I, I saw two of them again. The second one, I didn't recognize any of the songs, so I left it. I kind of kicked myself, though, because like I said, a couple of these songs I didn't recognize either, but when they played, it was songs that I really dig. So, uh, honestly, the main thing I bought it for was Time of the Season. I don't have a good copy of that. I have um, two uh, 45s for it, and they're both, uh, though they look good, they sound terrible. So I was really stoked to run across a real clean copy of that. So, next one. This was another one that blew me away. Again, I paid under eight bucks or under ten bucks for this. This is Who's Next from the Who, um, one of my favorite uh, Who albums. Um, Bob O'Reilly, um, uh, Behind Blue Eyes, uh, Bargain, Loving for Keeping. Just a great album from beginning to end. This one again, there's some a little, a little damage to the sleeve itself, or to the uh, the cover itself, but the vinyl is in mint condition. I also I I didn't grab it because I haven't listened to it yet. Uh, but I did also grab Tommy too, again for under under ten bucks. And like I said, whenever I see Tommy or Quandrophenia, even the even who's next, it's usually in the eighteen, twenty, twenty five dollar range. So to find original U.S. pressings of all of them in really good condition for under ten bucks was just a killer deal. Um, keep the killer deals rolling. I ran across a copy of Led Zeppelin Presence, a little dirty up here. Um, it's just from being an older record, and it's white, you know. Uh, this was on Swan Song, of course. Um, this is not my favorite Led Zeppelin. Um, this is probably towards the bottom. Um, however, it's still got some killer songs. It's still a killer album, you know, and it was, I, I had to fill that hole in my collection. So, next up, U2, Unforgettable Fire. This thing is still in the shrink. It is in mint condition. Um, the vinyl itself uh, sounds beautiful. Um... U2, uh, I don't want to say I'm a huge U2 fan. Every one of their albums have two or three songs that I really like, though. So anytime I run across them for a decent price, uh, and I think I paid like five or six bucks for this, I go ahead and pick it up. So definitely a good score. Again, um, The Unforgettable Fire. Uh, these next couple are probably the biggest scores that I've had in, in the last few months. Yeah. We'll start with the, the bottom one here. First U.S. pressing, Fleetwood Mac Rumors, in mint condition. Um, I mean, there's not a mark on it. It's in the original shrink, um, and I paid under 20 bucks for it. So, really killer deal. Um, I don't run across good copies of it. Every time I run across a copy of, of Rumors, it's just thrashed. Um, so I had to grab this as soon as I saw it. So, and uh, you know that's just a classic album from beginning to end. That should be in every music collector's um, collection, as should these next two. Um, this one blew me away when I saw it. Um, 1969 pressing of Led Zeppelin II. This is um, I'm still missing Zeppelin IV. Uh, that's the last uh, Zeppelin. Uh, early pressing that I need. Uh, it's funny. I've been missing Zeppelin 2. It's one of my favorite Zeppelin albums. And the day that I found this, I they had Zeppelin 2, the new um, the new pressing on the wall uh, for $29 or $28, whatever it was. And I was about to grab it. Uh, and then I was flipping through and I saw this. And if, if you can't tell, with the uh, exception of some little scuffing here on the corners, um, it's in excellent condition, a very high VG+. Plus. The vinyl is immaculate. It sounds beautiful. Uh, there's no noise whatsoever. It's in the original. Um, you can see it's in the uh, original uh, insert there, the original sleeve there, under 20 bucks. Again, this one in this condition, this pressing, goes for in the 60s. Uh, so I was really blown away um, to find this. And I actually found this, rumors and... Um, the U2 together, as well as this last one, which was probably, actually something's missing. I found one more album that day, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, well, I'll have to show that in a future video. 
this one was the one um, that I was most blown away by. <sighs> Pigs. First U.S. pressing. This thing is in mint condition. The vinyl, I would say probably VG+. Plus. Um, it may be near mint. There's no marks on it. Um, there is a little bit of noise, though, and, and that may be able to, uh, you know, um, if I can find somebody uh, with a good cleaning machine, I may be able to get that cleaned up to sound better. Um, this is a Gold Label Promo. Um, it's just an immaculate, immaculate condition. I was blown away when I saw this. This is probably, uh, this is probably my second favorite uh, Pink Floyd album. I love uh, animals. Uh, and I think this is probably the best B side, uh, in history, in my opinion. Uh, the, the um, side two of this album, um, pig, sheep and pigs on the wing. Um, uh, I don't think it gets better than that. Those three songs are three of my all time favorites on one side of one album. You know, uh, like I said, Animals is, is my second favorite. Uh, my favorite is Wish You Were Here um, from Pink Floyd. Number three would probably be Metal. Um, number four is probably The Wall. And I would say five, maybe Dark Side of the Moon. Um, they're all pretty good from that point. So, But uh, definitely Pigs. I was really stoked to run across that. So that's it, guys. Like I said, it's been a while since I did a Metal. or I'm sorry, since I did an update. Uh, I'll be doing a Metal update this weekend. It'll be a big one. There's some really cool, really good stuff to show there. So... Um, look out for that. Other than that, uh, keep on rocking, guys, and uh, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care, BC.